Hey guys, my name is Christina and I'm a medical student studying at Newcastle University and in this video I wanted to share with you guys how I use the app Notion. Notion has been something that I've been using for the past few months now and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's pretty much become the only note-taking app that I use or I guess the main one that I use. When I first started out on Notion I realised how complicated it was and how confusing it was to use certain things. Notion has so many features so it can be quite tricky to understand what to use and how to use it. So I wanted to make this video for you guys um, specifically for people who are quite new to Notion or maybe beginners on how to just use Notion and get started with it and I also wanted to give you guys some tips towards the end of this video on, on how to make the most out of Notion so in this video I'm going to share with you guys how I use Notion I'm going to give you a quick tour of my workspace the different pages that I have and how things are organized then at the end of this video I'm going to share with you guys some tips on how to make the most of Notion and just how to use it so starting off, what is Notion? So Notion is a note-taking app that is pretty much just an all-in-one. It's not just a place where you can dump all of your notes and shopping lists, but you can really like integrate and interlink them. You can customize everything. It's very, very personalized. There is so much that you can do with Notion, which is one of the things that makes it quite overwhelming. But once you have an idea of how to use it, then it becomes um, just really, really powerful and, and it does so much for you. The amazing thing about Notion as well is that it's completely free for students. So it's a free app, I'm pretty sure at the moment. So it's definitely well worth checking out if you're new to Notion. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick tour of my workspace, starting off with the media tab. This is pretty much where I sort out all of my blog and YouTube stuff, as well as some other bits as well. For my blog, um, I normally, I got this idea from Ali Abdal. He has all of his posts organized as embryos and then he moves them into the fetuses. So all of my embryo ideas are pretty much like the initial idea. This is where I put all of my um, just bursts of ideas. As you can see, there is so many here. Normally what happens is when I first have them, they go into the no ranking section and then I'll move them into one, two, three or four. Number one is ideas that I want to um, post as soon as possible and then number two, three and four are like not as important and what I love about Notion is that you can just drag and drop things really easily and move them about. So once the embryo idea, I've pretty much realised, yep, I want to move this onto my actual blog, I'll move it to the fetus section and in the fetus section I have it organised as not started, in progress and almost done and then if it's almost done it'll pretty much move to completed and then it'll move to my actual website where it's actually ready to go and be posted. In the media section I also have this YouTube script section which as you can imagine is where I write down all of my YouTube video ideas and I love that you can organise things as a calendar because it means that I know when YouTube videos are going to be coming out and you can also organise it as a a list which is sometimes useful if I want to see the full list of what is coming out and what is uploaded as you can see I've got tags sorted out so certain videos have been cancelled where I've decided not to upload them some of them have been edited filmed scripted etc so yeah I love that you can kind of change how you view things you can also view things as cards which because you can kind of drag and drop things you can kind of move things from oh this has been filmed this has been edited I love that you can like drag and drop things on Notion and makes it super duper easy. So also in my media tab, I have this little milestone section where I write down all the little goals that I've achieved. So when I first reached, um, you know, when I launched my blog and YouTube and then when certain people have reached out to me on Instagram and stuff. And yeah, it just makes like it motivates me to keep on going with what I'm doing. And it's really nice to be able to kind of look back in the future and see uh, when certain things happened. And yeah, I use the tags as well. I use the tags a lot. It just keeps everything really organized. And also in the media section, I have some other little pages as well that are kind of not as interesting. This, so this section here, links to future blog posts, is pretty much, if I write a blog post about GCSEs, I might want to relate that to a further post later on about A-levels. So I make a note of it here so I can come back later on and know when I need to do that. I've also got some other ones on just random notes on how to have a good YouTube channel and some notes on affiliate links as well. In my task list, this is pretty much where I keep the random odd jobs that I need to get done. This week, next week, the week after and so on. If you haven't watched my time blocking video, you'll know that I actually plan each week individually. So this just gives me a guide as to what needs to happen next week, what needs to happen the week after, and I can kind of plan that into my actual week. And I love it as well because you can kind of easily move stuff from next week to this week. So obviously when you move on to the next week, everything kind of follows on, if that makes sense. 
So when you move on to the next week, all of your tasks from next week become this week. So in my uni section, I have things organized into study, uni life and future. In this study bit, it's pretty much just all of my uni notes and then some notes on Malaysia. My university has this thing where you can travel to Malaysia for semester one in year two. So I wrote a few notes on that. And then in my other sections, so the social life sections, as you can imagine, I just write some notes on the societies that I want to join, some clothes I want to get, and then balancing YouTube with uni life. Um, and then I have some goals for my fourth year and fifth year and foundation years. So I'll show you guys my study notes, which I keep in my MBBS folder. MBBS just stands for um, Medis Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, which is pretty much just the abbreviation for the medicine degree. So I keep all of my main notes in my study calendar and at the top I've written a few notes on what I plan to do next year in terms of making my notes. I'm currently in my summer holiday so I'm not at university at the moment but um, I've kind of done a rough overview of what I plan to do. So cases 6 to 13 is first year stuff so I pretty much just did an overview of what I want to do next year. So I've used the tag overview to help me work out what is what. So what I'm planning to do next year is have each lecture, for example, one, two, and three, and kind of write down when I last studied them and say whether or not I kind of know it, don't know it, or know it really well. And then I'm gonna tag it depending on what topic it is. So embryology, pharmacology, or physiology. And then I'm gonna write down what case it is, because we learn by your cases. But obviously for first year, I just kind of did an overview just to help me revise over the summer. So this is just kind of um, an overview of the notes. And I'll show you what I've done for each case. So what I really like about Notion is that you can kind of color code things and you can use the TOG feature. So for each question, I've kind of um, given it like a red, orange or green in terms of red, I don't really know it that well. And then I can reveal the answer, test myself. Okay, I actually knew that. And then I can change it to um, orange. That way it kind of gives me an idea of, okay, case six, I know this really well, or I'm guessing I don't know it really well because most of it is orange and red. And then it's just a really easy way to study things. And if I've noticed that, do you know what, most of the things here are green, then I can change the status from don't know to kind of know. And then over time I can change it to no. So yeah, this is roughly how I'm planning to use it next year. I'll probably update you guys because I'm guessing it will change quite a bit, but um, I really like it because you can kind of um, see when you last studied things and you can kind of keep it as a calendar as well. I can kind of see today that mm, I should probably maybe study K6 and 7 again because I haven't studied that in a week and then it's just really easy to see things. So I'll also show you guys some of the templates that I have for each lecture. So I don't want to kind of take notes on each lecture from scratch. So I've made a template, which means that I can kind of just click on the lecture template, which is already filled in. And then when it comes to going to that lecture, all I have to do is just fill in, you know, topic one, topic two, and then, and so on. I've also got some templates for pharmacology and I think some, yeah, a flashcard deck. So. The pharmacology one is set out slightly differently because pharmacology is pretty much where you learn about a bunch of different drugs. So I've got this one set out in this format where I've got drug one, drug two, drug three, and so on. Um, so yeah, it just means that I don't have to kind of um, start out from scratch each time. I can just kind of fill everything in. And then I don't know if I'm going to use this much next year, but I've also created this flashcard deck thing where I'm planning on writing a bunch of questions here in the queue and then I'll move them to repeat, good and easy. And then eventually everything in the repeat should end up in easy or good. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use that yet, but I've made the template for it. So moving on to my personal section, the last and final section, I'm in this this tab, I guess I would say, fairly often. Um, I've customised it a little bit with some plants in the background because I love plants. And in the main section, I've got some affirmations, my journal and finance. So affirmations, if you watched my July favourites video, you know that I'm quite into saying positive things to myself. So I try and go here and repeat positive things to myself every day or so. And then I also have a journal. I used to have a physical journal, but um, I got really frustrated with how slow I was at writing. So in this journal, I pretty much write every few days, I would say. I like how it's organized kind of in when you last wrote them. So I can kind of go back and have a look at what I wrote back in the old days. And yeah, I also have a finance section. 
Um, I recently started doing this cool thing where I actually kind of write about what I want to buy. So back in the day, I used to just kind of buy whatever I liked and whatever I had the money for. But now I'm a bit more intentional with things. On the left, I write down a list of the things that I want to buy. For example, a nice jacket. And then out of 10, I'll rate it how important it is. So number one is like, that can wait. I don't need it right now. Number six or, you know, anything closer to 10 is quite important. I'll then write down the cost, um, you know, how does this add value to my life? So, you know, add to my wardrobe, helps the YouTube channel or it's essential. And then I'll write down the date that I added it and then the shop that I want to get it from. And this just means that rather than buying anything and everything, I've actually got a bit of a purpose and a bit of a structure. So anytime I'm buying something, I'll try and check and see if it's at the top of my list or at the bottom and whether or not it adds value in any way. So this is a cool thing that you guys could start doing in case you're a shopaholic like I used to be and it just helps you to be a bit more intentional with things. So in my goals section I have this really cool thing called the impossible list which was introduced to me by the incredible Unjaded Jade. I'll link to her video if you guys want to watch that as well and pretty much what you do is you write a bunch of goals so it could be fitness related, medical school related and you kind of write out the goal and then you cross it out and then add a new goal and I really really like this because it kind of just kind of boosts your uh, motivation. In my other goals um, list, I don't really use that as much, um, but in this one, I kind of write other goals. To be honest, I should probably check that out a bit more, but I haven't looked at it recently. And then I also have another folder, which is my French folder. I used to use this one a lot more, where I pretty much write some of the grammar and keywords that I learned from Duolingo. So for the grammar section, it's not very organized, but I've pretty much just got a massive list of all the different grammar that I need to know to help me in French conversation and to form sentences. Um, as you can see, it's just a massive list. I have got some things in bold to make it look a bit more organized, but I should probably add some headings and maybe add things into columns to make them a bit more organized. In the keyword section, um, I haven't been there in a while, so this will be interesting. Um, I have things, I think, organized just as bullet points. Yeah, so I should probably maybe make them into the tog feature where I can kind of hide stuff so I know, so I can kind of test myself, I guess. But yeah, this is just a massive long list of stuff. I think I've turned these into flashcards, which I find a lot more helpful. So just to finish off this video, I'm going to share with you guys some of the tips that I have to make the most of Notion, get started with it and just feel more comfortable with Notion. So in terms of organizing things, whenever you have a list, I would always recommend using the select or multi-select feature. This just means that you can just give everything a tag and then it means that when you want to filter or search for a certain tag, so for example, maybe you've got your classes on here and you want to search your biology class, you can just search for that tag. So I recommend if you've ever got like a list of a bunch of things, try and include the tags in the multi-select or select feature. So with databases, this is probably the most complex feature of Notion. That and I think rollups. I personally don't use rollups or databases that much, but I know that they are really, really powerful and they do a lot for you. Um, if you are interested in databases, then I think Thomas Frank has a really good video on how he uses it and some tips on how to get started with that. So I'll link that in the description box below. Databases become really helpful when you have two pages and you wanna kind of link them together. So if you change the information on one page, then the information on the other page will also change. So it kind of like, you don't have to go back and forth and change all the details they'll kind of sync together and everything's like up to date on the two pages or multiple maybe three four pages but yeah i don't really use databases as much but i know that it's really useful for some people so my number one tip for notion is to get inspiration from other people so if you're watching this video then that is a great step when i first got started i noticed that as soon as i watched other people's youtube videos i got so much inspiration on what to do with my workspace because notion it can be really overwhelming to start with i think seeing how other people are using it and what they're doing with their workspace can be really helpful for you so yeah definitely get inspiration from other people i personally think headings are the best way to make your workspace look organized as soon as i put headings at the top of each page and put them into like little sections i noticed that my like workspace looks so much more clean and organized so if you're thinking like how do i get this to look really cool just add some headings i normally use heading one which is the biggest one and yeah Put them into columns as well. Putting things into columns make them look so much more nicer as well. So my next tip is Notion templates. So when you first get Notion, there's gonna be, I think a couple of pages which are already there for you. And they're pretty much just the guidelines or the ready-made templates to help you get started. If you're completely clueless and you don't know where to start, then I think the templates are a good place to start with. Maybe just fill in the templates with all your information or all the stuff that you wanna get into Notion. I personally found the templates, um, they were quite good to get started with, but they weren't that helpful. I found watching other people's YouTube videos was the most helpful for me personally. 
Another tip for you guys is to make your own templates. So if you're someone that's using Notion for um, maybe your schoolwork, making those at university, or maybe just shopping lists and stuff like that, maybe for each class at, at university, try and have a template for how you're gonna make notes in that class. So if you can, try and make templates for all the different things that you'll be using Notion for. So I use Notion for my journal, writing YouTube videos, um, writing blog posts, and also for making notes at university. So I have a template for the rough um, outline of my university lectures. So it means that each time I've got a new lecture, I just click on the template and then I can just fill in the gaps. And it's the same thing for YouTube videos. So I've got a rough outline of what I would say in a YouTube video and I just kind of fill in the gaps again. You could do this with shopping lists as well. So maybe you could have it half filled in with the stuff that you buy every single week. So then each time you click on like a new shopping list, your template, you can just kind of add in the extra bits that um, aren't already filled in. This is really good because it just makes life easier if you've already got a template. So each time you need a new um, document or you need a new page of something, you've already got a template so you can just fill it in. If you're going to be using really long lists, I recommend using the TOG feature. So the TOG feature is kind of like a bullet point, but it basically allows you to hide a bunch of things. So I've noticed if I've got a really long list and it kind of like clutters up the page, um, put that long list into a toggle so that you can click it and then it reveals the list and then you can click it again and it hides the list. That way the, the the page just looks a lot nicer because you've not got like a massive list kind of messing it up if that makes sense so if you're taking notes on things and then you're typing in a massive list of stuff try and put that list into the tog feature but what i would recommend is actually to just dump everything into notion into a really rough format just dump everything and then try and sort it out and then try and organize it don't try and make it look really really good first or really organized really like clean cut just dump everything that you need onto notion all the things that you plan to have there um you know into different pages maybe and then try and organize it afterwards. I think it's much better to have everything there and then like customize and organize it rather than do it the other way around, if that makes sense. But if the other way around works for you, then do that as well. Customize. So this is one I'm pretty sure you're already doing, but try and add emojis to all your pages. Try and add, you know, the little covers to pages as well, like the background thing at the top. I've noticed the covers do take up a bit of space. So I don't put covers on pages that I'm in and out of frequently because I wanna just see the information. I'm not too bothered about the cover, but um, yeah, definitely customize. It just makes it a lot more personal. Switch to the dark mode if you really like the dark mode and stuff. Um, I personally prefer the light mode, but you know, you do, you definitely customize it as much as you want. But the main shortcut that I use is control P and that just allows you to search absolutely anything in your workspace on Notion. So sometimes I don't quite know where certain things are, but I know that, you know, oh, I've, I've, I'm sure I wrote a blog post on Instagram a while ago and then I'll just control P and then I type in Instagram and then it will show me whereabouts that post is. So definitely use that if you don't know where you've kept a certain page that allows you to just find anything on your workspace. But there are also some other shortcuts as well. For example, if you want to create a new page, you can use Control N. And if you want to make something bold or a certain color, then all you have to do is type in um, forward slash and then red or forward slash then bold. If you want to like reference to a certain page, you can just click at and then that page. You can also do a similar thing with the date. So you can do forward slash then the date of something. And I think it kind of adds a date to that page. So yeah, learning the shortcuts just make using Notion so much um, easier to navigate because you're not having to like click the mouse on everything. It's just really, really quick and stuff. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful. I found it super duper helpful watching other people's videos and how they use Notion, seeing their workspaces and stuff. So I hope this has given you a bit of inspiration. I'm gonna link below to some of my favorite Notion videos because in, just in case you guys wanna get a bit more inspiration and then you can watch some of the videos that I've linked to in the description box. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye. And if you're completely clueless, And then at the end of- Have-